just start by talking to you guys about how you're feeling, because this is a big week. Oh, we're on adrenaline at the moment. <laughs> ask us on Thursday afternoon. Yeah, yeah absolutely, <laughs> ask us Thursday afternoon. <laughs> But no, it's, uh, it's very buzzy. It's great to see a big trade area and all the trade back again. And uh, lots of friendly and happy faces. It's a good time also to catch up and be social with people and um, find out some of the stuff that people have been plotting and scheming in the background. And now it's, they've come to Vala and they're sharing what, they've, what they're doing. That's a, that, well, that's an interesting angle to take straight off. Is there anything that's particularly struck you, David, in that area? Uh, well, it's been early days, but I think, you know, most of us heard uh, David Lankies this morning, and um, I, th I think one of the big takeaways from that is, you know, um, <clears throat> we have to empower ourselves, and I think we have a lot to offer. Um, I, I, I think we need to just be very careful that if we, we start walking like a victim and talking like a victim and behaving like a victim, as libraries will be treated as victims, and sometimes you just got to do things because you just got to do them. So you have to stop worrying about the business plan and all those other things. You just actually have to make it happen. And, and, and what the examples he used, and certainly I think in, in both of our situations, is if you are entrepreneurial a bit like that, um, you tend to be viewed a slightly different way and good funding things do happen. Yeah, yes, that's true. And I don't know, I've started thinking more often lately that if libraries fail, it's not going to be because of the funding, it's not going to be because of the buildings, it's not going to be because people don't want to come to a library. Unfortunately, it is, going on from what David said, it's because of the staff not taking that next step. And what David was, uh, Lankies was saying this morning about you being able to do this, being really, um, what was the word he used? Um, really being yeah, mm -hmm. empowered and being really wanting to do your best and taking those steps, you being responsible for yourself for where mm -hmm. you want to go. Nobody's going to serve anything up to you on a silver platter and the people here are showing that, that they are actually taking their own professional development, being curious, all of that into their own hands and coming along, which is fantastic to see, of course. Mm. Absolutely, and I mean, I think um, David is a really good way to start any conference. Absolutely. Uh, and he certainly is very uh, uh, motivational, confronting, yes. uh, and, and, and empowering. Um, in terms of your, so when you take on a role, like you two have taken on around the Vala conference, mm. uh, obviously you have uh, ideas about maybe what you want the conference to be, uh, maybe hopes and aspirations for that. What sort of things went through your head uh, as this conference came together and, and how's that shaped up? Well, we, we always look for um, things that are new and novel. Um, somebody sort of said, well, you know, why don't you do this or you don't do that? I mean, we've, it, we, there are really good speakers out there and there are some really good issues out there, but you want to try and also be, be fresh. There's some new stuff that's coming forward. So again, you know, people have only had a chance to hear the morning sessions, but the work um, that say Ben Chadwick from SKIS has been doing with linked data standards within the catalogue and working with Sparkle and Sparkle endpoints. Now we, we had um, Tom Taig at Vala in 2010 when he was talking about linked data standards and we've kind of been looking for a while on, okay, it's all really good and happening. Tim Berners-Lee is saying how important it is. People like Google are absolutely latching onto it um, with uh, the Google knowledge graphs. It's, interestingly enough, it's a bit hard to find. There's actually a YouTube clip of Google about Google when they're, and this is from two years ago, and they're saying, we're in the early stages of um, moving from being a search company to a knowledge company. This is Google. And they're doing it and seeing linked data as a really important part of that. Now, for libraries to ignore that, particularly coming from Google, I think is um, at best naive and at worst um, negligent. So it was really, really good to see um, Education Service Australia got some really interesting practical applications of how you can actually use linked data with a library setting. And that's, that's the sort of thing where people come with their projects and they might be in development, but then other people can go, oh, okay, that's fine. You have then the, the connection where they can talk afterwards and say, well, 
you know, what worked, what didn't work, because we, we all know, all of our projects, there's always pitfalls. There's always the things that didn't work, and that's often as important to understand and know as the things that, that do work. And I think that's where this forum is, that's what we kind of look for in encouraging. Um, yes, and some of the papers actually are explaining also where what we did and perhaps what didn't work and that is the best learning experience there is so the technology we are a technology conference so going back to the technology it doesn't have to be big yes link data and you know, i can link data and me yes 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 but also some of the smaller things that people did in the in the technology area it could be a little bit but again taking that power back empowering yourself doing going out and doing things even if it's small things you have to take the first step and build on from that. So being able to exchange those sorts of ideas and to me, and yes, we are very early in the, um, in the conference, but to me, the most interesting papers are always those that say, well, we tried this and we tried this and then when we fell into a hole, a big one, we made this mistake and this mistake and this mistake and this is what we did to get out of the hole. Or we said, okay, oops, let's try again because we can all learn from those and exchanging those, uh, that knowledge and that learning only stands us in good stead as, as librarians. But I think the other thing that we look for, and hopefully this is also what the delegates look for, is we all work within our, our silos. We, we come from public libraries, we come from universities, we come from schools or, or health libraries, medic, um, law libraries. And often we don't realise that people in the other silos are facing the same issues that we're facing. Uh, copyright, for example, doesn't discriminate of what sort of library service you are. Um, community engagement, there's many similarities, say, between a public library, school or a university. So the fact that it's an opportunity for people to move outside of their, say, traditional silos, their traditional professional networks, um, I mean, I think it's really exciting that we've got our friends from New Zealand here because there's a whole raft of areas where they're looking at things that, in a way that we may not have thought of, where we can learn from each other. Um, at a, a, a reception uh, a few years ago, Yo-Yo Ma, the, the uh, cellist, uh, made the comment that the interesting things happen when cultures collide or rub up against each other because you've got the, you know, the mixing of the waters. That's, that's where all the interesting stuff happens. So I think one of the things that makes Vala a really interesting conference is that you have people uh, in the same session from a medical library, from school sector, from the universities. You've got people from Australia, from New Zealand, and you're all from Singapore. Um, and, and that's what makes it a really interesting conference. So, um I mean, you're touching on a really interesting vein there, which is the one around the fact that we work in organisations where often um, we're not always encouraged to talk about the things that don't work. Mm. Uh, and yet the reality is we learn, and we learn as a profession, by sharing some of that stuff. Um, have you got any thoughts about how we create an environment which um, actually encourages that even more? While Eb's thinking, um, well, there's a number of ways we have to do it, and one of the reasons why I think it's become imperative is there is so much new things that are happening. I mean, the internet is now what? I, I had my first email address in 1990. I mean, that's why I've got the grey hair. I've been around that long. You know, I mean, 25 years I've had an email address. Um, I just remember the internet before uh, Netscape, remember when it was all code based. So it's not new. But there's really new things happening. And again, I think things like um, the linked data side of things, where big business and large corporations are ab and, large, and large government are absolutely understanding that and, and uh, taking those opportunities. So there's some things that are new for us. To go back to your point is we can't wait to make it right. Sometimes you've just got to try it and see how it goes. Because if you, it, if you wait until it's perfect, it's out of date, it's obsolete. So I think as, as librarians, we like to aim for perfection. I think that's a good thing. But sometimes good enough is good enough. 
Yeah, absolutely. We need to be able to work in a perpetual beta environment and just get used to it. Hey, that's daily life. I would also like to really encourage um, people from various sectors to put in abstracts to give the papers. It doesn't matter if you do something small in a school library or a public library or an academic library. We can all learn from that. And just you're saying, well, I'm just a public library person. I, nobody's going to want to know this. Well, yes, we do. And academic libraries from wh where I'm from can learn from what David's doing in a school library. And that sort of cross-fertilization, even if it's saying, oh, I can do that. And then if I add that, I can do that. Ah, but then I can go there. It's all that starting to think to be inspired uh, to be inspired to be challenged and that's what's important and this is what I really like about Bala too that we've got the, those different areas and those different categories and of course we've got the vendors here go talk to the vendors go challenge them the, the linked art is a classic one rock up to your uh, library service your, your ILMS and ask them what are yeah. they doing yeah and how are you going to do this and what are your time frames and uh, you know I'm willing to work with you. I want to help to get us, us, not you, not them, us, to where we need to be. Mm. Mm. And so, Eve, just, I mean, taking on to that point, so the process of putting in a paper for Vala, what, what is that process? And, and what, what happens when somebody submits a paper? Okay. The call for papers will go out probably in about six months. To, well, the keynotes, we lock in the keynotes first. And then the call for papers go out in about a year before conference. And that's where I really encourage people to put in the abstract. It's a 500 word abstract on, on what you're doing. Really look at the technology, what technology you're using, how are you using it. Even if it's a fail, remember that everybody can learn from that. And we are interested in learning and hearing about those things, not all what we did good. Once the, um, thank you, flight. Uh, once the abstracts come in, we look at the abstracts, select the papers, or those that we would go forward into papers, and then we ask the people to write that up. And, and I think it's also um, indicative of the reputation that Vala's got. Uh, and I think we're pretty unique, in this part of the world at least. Um, we're only in a position to accept 34% of the abstracts submitted into papers. So if you're an author in Vala, um, there's many more people who try who, who, who wrote who didn't get in and it, it is it is um, tough when you have so many abstracts and you, you want to do the right thing fortunately we have um, really great volunteers who review the abstracts and then the papers and they come from all parts of the library community and indeed internationally so we're, we're lucky we actually have a number of former keynote speakers who have been asked to stay in touch with us, who act as advisories, um, advisors, but also act as reviewers. And I, I'm not aware of any other conference in this part of the world where there is that process and that ongoing relationship with former keynote speakers. That's, and that's really interesting to hear about. I mean, 34% is a really interesting stat, because uh, you know, in terms of uh, operating as a professional, yes. uh, to present at Vala, to have a paper accepted, is actually quite an achievement. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, if you're really, to just to be here, that, that is already something to, to be worth celebrating. And, I, and I, I think, personally, I think we've got to do that, because my time, I'm time poor, I'm sure you are, I know Eb is, I'm sure everybody in the room is time poor. People have real legitimate learning needs, and you've got to be across so much more now our um, sectors of, um, I was looking at say the university stats for Australia and New Zealand and where there's been a decline in um, the total number of people employed in universities in Australia and New Zealand in the last five years there's actually been an increase in the number of professional librarians at the same time there's been a decrease in paraprofessional and support staff so as less and less uh, print collections and reshelvers and more and more is involved with online content and license managing and authentication. Our work has become more complicated. So um, I think it's really important that when people do take time out to do professional development and learning like they're doing here, it's got to be at a really high standard. Yes, 
absolutely. But just because you may not have succeeded the first time, please don't give up. Keep trying because, yes, the percentage is small, but every time you people still have interesting things to say. So, yeah, keep we've, trying we've, again. We've had papers knocked back. We're, we're still here. <laughs> we can show you the scars later. Well, look at you now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, that's a really good point because that's the other thing that often strikes me about the profession is that uh, we work within a learning context. And I mean, David was talking about that this morning in his, in a, in his keynote. Uh, and yet, as a profession, we're often not that good at ongoing learning ourselves or dealing with sometimes the knockbacks that we get around that. It's very easy to go, well, that didn't happen, so I'm just going to stay in my job. I've got my qualification, so I don't need to do some more. Um, yeah, and I think conferences like Vala, and I mean, Vala does have a pretty, uh, I suppose, special reputation. Uh, in this part of the world sort of uh, add to that. Yeah, I think so, and I would hope so. Uh, we keep growing and changing too. You will notice that there are new things in Vala this time with the round tables. We will learn from what from this conference and take that into the next, con next conference. So in a way, we're also in a perpetual state of beta. We just keep learning, keep adapting, keep changing as we, as we need to in, in the committee, in the conference, and as we need to do in, in, in the profession as well. Mm. Yeah, and, and part of that is um, because the technology is changing the way that we can have the conversations. Um, uh, and and le let's not forget, we can also be very innovative. I mean, the 2010 conference, the conference hashtag for one day at Vala 2010 was the highest trending hashtag in Australia. Now, with all the Kardashians, we wouldn't get there now, but you know, let's, let's, not, let's not forget, as, as a profession, we're actually often at the forefront. We don't necessarily stop and reflect about how cutting edge and, um, and dynamic and professional we can actually, we often are. So I think part of the, you know, what the next, this today and the next two days is about is also celebrating that innovation and that um, cutting edge-ness um, of the, the people in the room and the people participating. You've actually given me an idea there, David, which, um, so a few years ago, quite controversially, Lianza had um, Paula Ryan, who was a former model uh, and fashion guru, talk at the conference about how to dress and present yourself. Now, in the world of the Kardashians, just a thought, it's just a thought, maybe Kim Kardashian for uh, Vala 2018? Does my bum look big in this? <laughs> I couldn't possibly comment. So um, I suppose that leads us perfectly to, do you have any thoughts about the future for Vala from here uh, in terms of the conference? Uh, and uh, I know we're only a few hours into 2016, but uh, any thoughts about what 2018 might look like? Oh, there are some, but uh, that would be telling now, wouldn't it? We are approaching the 40th anniversary of Vala in our 2018 conference, so that's going to be a very special uh, birthday for us and we will do everything that of course we can to make that the that Vala conference that much more special so I do encourage people to come along as I say we always adapt we'll see how some of the things work for example the round tables work in this conference where David and I were already talking about potentially putting in another stream of some other things which project you, X yeah project X exactly for, for the next conference, so we, we, we listen, we, we try to learn from what our, dele our delegates are telling us and also where we think that we may be able to um, put that sort of future, future one, things and keeping people here at the conference. One, one thing that we are going to be doing sooner rather than later, um, we have done a digitising uh, backfile project. And it, it's since we moved to the new website and we've been collectively building up um, the online proceedings of the Vala conferences and after six months they're actually freely available. And what we're going to do is in digitising the, the backfire we'll go back to the first conference. So basically it will be the, as far as we know, the one of the very few open access, peer reviewed, authoritative um, collections which represents the history and discourse 
of library science, particularly with information technology, for both Australia and New Zealand. And we think we've got a, a responsibility to make sure that that information is always available and freely available. And because it's now got enough of a, a, a back file, we're also finding from the library schools that they're often relying and using on that to support uh, the teaching for the next generation. So with our recent change in delegate and memberships, one of the things that we've done is if you are a current, uh, for, for something for Australia, if you are a current library student in Australia, you have immediate and free access. Um, you know, because we don't get any government funding, and um, it's the registration which pays for all of this, and you know, this costs almost a million dollars to put on, um, we do have to put some time embargoes for everybody else. But we do actually see that there's a particular responsibility for helping support the, the learning outcomes for the next generation of librarians. And I think that's, I mean, that's a, uh, you know, a great uh, example of um, obviously Vala contributing back, but also Vala exists as a conference. Vala also exists as an association. And that content, because it is peer reviewed in the way it is, represents a, a very solid uh, amount of research, which is then available uh, into the future, uh, well after any conference has, has been. Absolutely, and because it's open, yes, it's, it's out there for anybody, not only the Australian New Zealand commun um, library community, but also the international library community to, to tap into, which, yes, it, it will show the history of thought, so that, um, that's going to be a and good And also some, some really significant commentators and players. I mean, when you look at the number of Williamson recipients, for example, who have given papers, and uh, people who are... Um, incredibly well respected um, and, and quite rightly for the contribution they've made so you know tick 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 a few days time we'll find out who the Williamson recipient is for 2016. Indeed indeed and I suppose that leads me on to the last thing I just wanted to talk about uh, is that thing around professionalism so like being professionally involved and I mean obviously things like uh, what you guys have done around this conference and that um, what are your thoughts around especially these days where it's probably harder than ever to um, uh, attract people to be, want to be involved uh, about the importance of, of operating as a professional and being involved in associations like VALA? It takes commitment, it takes time commitment. Everybody has a day job and I personally I'm finding it harder and harder to fit these sorts of commitments into my day job but that doesn't mean I stop doing them because this is where I get my intellectual stimulation, where I can talk to colleagues, where I can feed off ideas, where I can exchange ideas. And I've got numerous committee hats, but I feel that if I want to call myself a professional librarian, I need to put the time and effort in. It may be some, it is, yes, a fair amount of it is my own time and effort, but that, to me is what makes me a professional librarian. I'm not going to expect my organisation, whatever that is, to constantly fund me for this, that and the other. I need to do it myself because I need to take responsibility for my own professional development, for, for also putting back into the community. Because if you exchange ideas, it can't all be one way. If somebody's doing something fantastic, will you feel you have to give, not only can you, you listen and you learn, but then you need to give back also from what you have learned and help others out who may be going down the, that a particular pathway, whether it's implementing a new library services platform or picking up um, PDA from Canopy, the streaming people or something else, and you're finding all this interesting stuff, well, why should I keep it to myself? I want to share, I want to let others know so they can leverage that off for their communities. Mm. The, other, the other thing I'd say too though, purely out of self-interest, something like the Vala Committee isn't necessary for everybody, but um, as an employer, admittedly a small employer, uh, I do actually look to see what professional engagement candidates um, are participating in. And if I've got two candidates and they're both very similar, I'll always go for the one that is showing uh, professional engagement and commitment because it shows initiative, um, it shows that they 
self-start. It shows a whole lot of things, but it, it shows they're actually passionate about the about the sector. And I, th I think, you know, skills are really important. But in a highly competitive work environment, if you can demonstrate, really demonstrate your passion and commitment, that can only help you with your career. Yeah, and your ability and willingness to learn, which is a big thing as well. And, and I mean, I'd agree with that. I mean, with in terms of my involvement with Leanza, I mean, you know, there are short-term benefits, which are the things that you get out of whatever you're doing at that time, but there's the long-term benefit as well, which is uh, about that point in the future when you do go for a, a role or apply for a scholarship or many of the things that, that you know you can potentially do and obviously being involved and being involved with association is, is a huge help around that. Okay, so in a, in a second, I'm going to ask you for one word uh, that you want to give which will encapsulate how you think the rest of the conference is going to go. Um, while you're thinking of that, uh, just to talk about the fact that, so tonight at the um, opening uh, reception drinks, we'll be talking with the keynotes uh, up here, so uh, please make sure that you're around and have a listen to that, because I think that's going to be a very, very interesting conversation. All right, who wants to go first with their word? Can I have two? Okay. Learn Geek. Learn Geek? Yes, learning the, the geeky stuff and being inspired and, and impassioned with the geeky stuff because everybody's got a little bit of geek in them, especially librarians. Well, if, if Eb's got two, I would have to... Okay, I think um, innovation and um, enthusiasm. All fine words. Well, Eb Carterson and, and David Fane, thank you very much for your time up here and thank you very much for um, contributing to putting this, this conference on. I'm looking forward to the next couple of days and I'm sure everybody here is as well. Thank you. Thank you and enjoy.